Imagine being home alone at 3 a.m. when the air suddenly turns icy cold and the shadows on your wall start to move on their own. What if these shadows weren't just tricks of the light, but something far more sinister? In this story, I'll take you through my real life experience when my curiosity led me into the dark world of magic and the unimaginable nightmare that followed. This isn't just a tale. It's something that actually happened to me. Stay tuned if you dare. It was a cold, silent night when I first noticed the shadows on my bedroom wall moving on their own. The clock had just struck 3 a.m., the hour when the world seems to stand still, caught between night and day. In the dim light of the moon, I saw a figure, not quite human, slipping in and out of the darkness. My heart pounded as I lay there, frozen, trying to make sense of what I was seeing. Was it just a trick of the light? Or was something more sinister at play? The room was thick with silence, but it was the kind of silence that seemed to hum with hidden energy, like the world was holding its breath. As I watched the shadows dance across the wall, the air grew heavy with the scent of something old and decaying. And then, just as suddenly as it had appeared, the figure melted back into the darkness, leaving me alone with my racing thoughts and a growing sense of unease. Dark magic and ghostly presences have always held a strange allure for me, not just because of the stories and legends surrounding them, but because of the unexplained events that have woven their way into my own life. From a young age, I was drawn to the mysterious and the unknown, always feeling like there was something lurking just beyond the veil of reality something waiting to be discovered. I devoured books on the occult, haunted houses, and ancient rituals, always searching for that one piece of evidence that would prove the existence of the supernatural. But it wasn't just a thirst for knowledge that drove me. It was something deeper, a pull I couldn't explain, as if these dark forces were reaching out to me calling me to explore their secrets. As I grew older, this fascination only deepened. The idea that there could be more to this world than meets the eye is both terrifying and exhilarating. And it's this duality that has kept me searching for answers, even when those answers come at a cost. I remember the first time I truly felt the presence of something otherworldly. It was on a family trip to an old, crumbling castle in Scotland. The locals spoke of it in hushed tones, warning us not to venture too far into the ruins. But being the curious child I was, I ignored their warnings and wandered off on my own. As I explored the dark, musty corridors, I felt a cold hand brush against my shoulder. I turned around, but there was no one there. The air was thick with an oppressive energy, and I could feel eyes watching me from the shadows. It was in that moment that I knew I was not alone. My journey into the realm of dark magic began slowly, almost imperceptibly, like the creeping of shadows at dusk. It started with small, strange occurrences that I easily dismissed as mere coincidences. Objects would move on their own, often just a few inches from where I had left them. Keys would go missing, only to reappear in places I was certain I hadn't been. Lights would flicker, even though the bulbs were new. At first, I shrugged these off, telling myself that everyone misplaces things, or that the old wiring in my apartment was to blame for the flickering lights. But then, the occurrences became harder to ignore. 
there was the time when a book on witchcraft, one I hadn't touched in years, fell off the shelf and opened to a page about summoning rituals. Or the time when I found a circle of salt perfectly drawn around my bed one morning, something I knew I hadn't done. I started to feel a chill in the air that never seemed to go away, no matter how many layers I wore or how high I turned up the heat. It was as if the warmth had been sucked out of the room, leaving behind only a cold, creeping dread. One evening, after a particularly unsettling day where the shadows seemed to follow me no matter where I went, I found myself drawn to an old, forgotten bookstore at the edge of town. The shop was tucked away in a narrow alley, its windows dark and dusty, as if it had been closed for years. But the door creaked open when I pushed against it, and I was met with the musty scent of old paper and leather. The shop was filled with ancient tomes and relics from a time long past, their titles barely legible from centuries of wear. The owner, a frail, elderly man with piercing eyes that seemed to see right through me, appeared from the shadows. He didn't speak, but there was a knowing look in his gaze, as if he understood why I was there, even if I didn't fully understand it myself. Without a word, he handed me a book bound in cracked black leather. The title was in a language I didn't recognize, but something about it called to me, as if the book itself was alive and whispering my name. I should have turned and left right then, but curiosity got the better of me. That night, I made the mistake of opening it the moment I read the first incantation from that book. Something shifted in the room. It was as if the very air around me had thickened, growing heavy with a sense of foreboding. The temperature plummeted, and I could see my breath puffing out in small clouds as I read the ancient, unfamiliar words aloud. The world outside my window seemed to fall away, leaving only the oppressive silence that now filled the room. I felt as if I were no longer in my own home, but in a place where time and space didn't quite work the same way. Then I felt it, a presence, ancient and malevolent, watching me from the shadows. The air grew thick with a sense of dread, and the shadows seemed to writhe and twist, taking on forms that were almost, but not quite, human. It was as if the darkness itself had come alive, wrapping itself around me like a suffocating shroud. I could feel it pressing in on all sides, squeezing the air from my lungs, making it impossible to breathe. Suddenly, the candles in the room flickered out, plunging me into darkness. My heart was pounding in my chest, each beat echoing in my ears like the tolling of a distant bell. I heard footsteps, slow and deliberate, coming closer and closer, though I couldn't see anyone there. Panic rose within me as I fumbled to relight the candles, my hands shaking so badly that I almost dropped the matches. When the flame finally caught, I was met with a sight that I will never forget. Standing at the foot of my bed was a figure, its form barely distinguishable from the shadows that clung to it. Its eyes, glowing with an unnatural, sickly green light, bore into me with a gaze that felt like it was peeling back the layers of my soul exposing my deepest fears and secrets. The air around it crackled with dark energy, a malevolent force that seemed to warp the very fabric of reality. Its fingers, long and twisted, like the gnarled roots of an ancient tree, reached out towards me. I was paralyzed with fear, unable to move or speak as it drew closer, the room growing colder with each step just as its hand was about to touch me, the figure suddenly dissolved into a cloud of thick,
black smoke. The candles flared back to life, their flames burning brighter than before. The room was silent once more, but the sense of dread lingered, a heavy weight pressing down on my chest. I sat there, trembling, as the reality of what had just happened slowly sank in. I had summoned something, something ancient and dark, and now it was bound to me. The encounter left me shaken to my core. In the days that followed, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched, even in broad daylight. Every shadow seemed to hide a pair of glowing eyes. Every creak and groan of the old apartment sounded like those deliberate footsteps. Mirrors would fog up with strange symbols etched into them, symbols that I later recognized as protective wards, though I had no memory of drawing them. I started waking up with bruises and scratches that I couldn't explain, as if something had been trying to drag me from my bed in the dead of night. My dreams were no longer my own, filled with twisted, nightmarish landscapes where I was hunted by the shadowy figure. I would wake up in a cold sweat, the sheets tangled around me, my heart racing as if I had been running for my life. The presence I had summoned, or perhaps simply awakened, was now a part of my life, and no amount of cleansing rituals or prayers seemed to be able to banish it. I became more withdrawn, haunted by nightmares and visions that blurred the line between reality and madness. The world around me seemed to lose its color, everything muted and cold, as if I were viewing life through a frosted window. Friends and family noticed the change in me, but how could I explain what had happened? How could I tell them that I had unleashed something dark and terrible into the world? I felt like I was losing myself, becoming a mere shadow of who I once was. All because I had delved too deeply into forces I didn't fully understand. Desperate, I turned back to the book that had started it all, hoping to find a way to reverse what I had done pages that had once been filled with ancient incantations and dark knowledge were now blank, as if the book had fulfilled its purpose and was no longer needed. I searched through every text and grimoire I could find, looking for some way to undo the curse I had brought upon myself, but every lead ended in dead ends and despair. Before we continue with the final part of this story, I have a question for you all. Have you ever experienced something you couldn't explain? A brush with the supernatural or an encounter with forces beyond our world? I'd love to hear your stories. Share them in the comments below. And if you're as fascinated by the paranormal as I am, don't forget to subscribe for more tales of the mysterious and the unknown. Let's explore the darkness together, one story at a time. Let continue with the story. The presence grew stronger with each passing day, its influence seeping into every aspect of my life. Electronics would malfunction in my presence, lights would flicker and die and the shadows that clung to the corners of my home seemed to whisper my name. I was trapped, living in a world where the lines between the living and the dead were blurred, where the darkness was a living, breathing entity that fed on my fear. Looking back, I realized that the encounter with dark magic and the supernatural has changed me in ways I never expected. It has opened my eyes to the unseen world that exists alongside our own. But it has also shown me the dangers of meddling with forces beyond our comprehension. I've learned that some doors are better left unopened, and some knowledge is too dangerous to pursue. Yet, despite the fear and the darkness that now follows me, 
I can't help but feel a strange sense of awe at the power that exists just beyond the veil. This experience has shaped my view on the supernatural, making me both more cautious and more curious. I now understand that the world is full of mysteries that we may never fully comprehend. And sometimes, it's better that way. The presence is still with me, a constant reminder of the price I paid for my curiosity. But I have learned to live with it, to accept that there are forces in this world that we are not meant to understand. The shadows no longer frighten me as they once did, but I remain vigilant, always aware of the darkness that lurks just out of sight. I've come to see the supernatural not as something to be feared, but as a reminder of the vast, unknown universe that lies beyond our perception. We are not alone in this world, and perhaps we never have been. The encounter has left its mark on me, both physically and spiritually, but it has also given me a deeper understanding of the mysteries that surround us.